Bonjour et bienvenue to the Western Caribbean where Ponant's beautiful ship, Le Dumont de Ville, has been wowing her guests with the most exhilarating island hopping experience that can possibly be had in this beautiful part of the world. An Eastern Caribbean cruise is the perfect mix of jaw-droppingly gorgeous scenery, picture-perfect weather mostly, and, well, for us Europeans, just the thing to escape a cold winter. The Caribbean vlogs which show you this region in detail are coming up soon, so please subscribe, hit that bell notification, and we promise you'll absolutely love what drops into your notifications over the next few months. While you wait for those, Helen and I present you with a comprehensive review of the small ship pond experience, and we'll be covering dining, entertainment, the ship, the crew, the excursions, well, just about everything you need to know about this super luxurious French Cruise Lines Explorer class ships. At only 131 meters in length, this class of ship is one of only a few that can squeeze into some of those tiny islands, beaches and bays that will elude the vast majority of cruise passengers and we'll be taking you around every single one of them right here and in our experience vlog series. So welcome aboard as we now show you everything we loved and a few things we didn't about these fantastic little ships. Let's crack on. Bonjour, and welcome to Le Demont de Ville. Le Demont de Ville, and one of Ponant's Explorer class ships, which is like the smaller range because they've got two ranges of ships, um, where you've got like Le Lirial, and that is the larger ones, and you've got uh, Le Bello and Dumont de Ville. And I think there's six in total, the Explorer yeah. class. So it takes about 180 passengers. We have about 130 on our cruise at the moment, so not quite full capacity. Which is great. Yeah. Because we found a lovely quiet area. It's the observation lounge uh, at the front of the ship. And it's such a beautiful little lounge. Um, but everyone is off today because we're in Grenada and uh, we've decided to stay on the ship. Well, we've been here before, haven't we? we have. And done a large island tour last time we were here. Mm. So. Um, yeah, we're using today to catch up on some stuff. And to record a nice thing for you guys, which is a full review of our experience on the Dumont de Ville and uh, the Explorer class ships in general. You know, um, what are they like? What are they like to sail on? How good are they, basically? And would you want to do it? Let's start with a little montage. I think that's a French word, isn't it? Montage? Every word is French, isn't it, really, at the end of the day? Anyway, let's start with a montage. Uh, there will be plenty more Dumont de Ville uh, content coming from us. We've got a ship tour. Uh, we've got a full vlog series, which I really, really recommend you watch because um, we've taken a ton of footage from all the beautiful places we've visited uh, here in the Eastern Caribbean. And some of them are just jaw dropping. So uh, do, do look at that as well. And uh, yeah, um, there's plenty more to go. But in the meantime, let's tell you what we think. So talk a little bit about our itinerary. We're on a 12 night Caribbean cruise. We've had um, a couple of bigger places like today we're in Grenada and we started in Martinique and we've also stopped in a deserted island in the <laughs> middle of nowhere Literally and everything no in between it. really. It's amazing. So there's a wide variety. It's not, you're not visiting a lot of the usual places. Well, we do, we are visiting some of the places that usual cruise ships go to, but also some of the places that cruise ships 
we'll ne other cruise ships will never go to. No, I mean, this is a tiny ship, like we say, with a maximum of 184 passengers, so uh, it really is small, and so it can get into those little tiny bays and all those sort of areas. Uh, it's also equipped with Zodiacs as well as tenders, so the Zodiacs, if you don't know, are little small inflatable, they call them ribs, which is... Um, rigid inflatable boats. A rigid RIB. inflatable boat, the ribs, uh, which most expedition ships use to get to uh, remote places that don't have normal landings. So it's got a mixture of both, which means as an expedition ship, it can get into those little places and take you to those remote places that literally other mm. ships just simply can't go. So, yeah, and we've yeah. had two or three alongside. Most of the stops have been tenders. Tenders, And yep. then we've had a couple of Zodiac wet beach landings. Which, which is like proper expedition, yeah. isn't it? It just reminds us of when we were in the Galapagos and uh, it, it, it just brings all those sort of thrills back doesn't it yeah so but they're very good at giving instructions about how to use the zodiac so don't worry about that if you've never used zodiacs before just make sure you bring yourself some like aqua shoes or something so that when you get off and literally jump into the sea to yeah. get off the zodiac um is but they're brilliant at helping you on yeah. and off yeah. captain is usually at the marina deck every day yeah. making sure that passengers get on and off the tenders or on and off the zodiacs isn't he because we can get into these small areas, we are often having uh, late departures, which is great. So uh, tonight, for example, say in Grenada, we're leaving at about 10 p.m. And so people can enjoy the evenings and the sunsets from land if they want, or they can go and uh, grab a drink around the bar like we did yesterday yeah. in uh, Betquay and, and, and just sort of enjoy the full experience. I mean, it's, Yesterday in Beckway, for example, so we were sort of sitting there drinking, watching the sun go down behind the ship, having a yeah. local beer on the shore, just utterly magnificent. And then as soon as we'd done that, as soon as the sun had come down, we went back on the tender and went back on the ship and had tea. Yeah. Or should I say had dinner? Yeah. Tea. So British, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> so, so yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's lots of things. There's uh, the fact that we can do early morning departures if we want to stay overnight. So... One of them we left at 6 a.m. in the morning because we only had 20 nautical miles to go to our next thing. This is how close the islands are together and how close our landings are together because we can get in all these little tiny places. And that's the magnificent part of being in a small ship. Um, it really needs to be, you know, experienced to believe, really. And when we use the tenders and the zodiacs, you get off of the ship on the marina deck, which is just located just below the pool deck where there is the pool and the grill restaurant. So when you come back onto the ship, literally climb a few steps and there's the pool and there's the restaurant. So mm. one day we came back and I was really hot and tired, we'd walked a lot. And I literally just came back on the ship and jumped in the pool. And then another day we came back and we got back at like one o'clock from an excursion. So we literally just like dumped our stuff and on a table and sat and had lunch. It's, mm. it's so convenient isn't it yeah. it's lovely you'll see the whole thing in our vlog i mean it's a, it's a very detailed vlog it's sort of it's it's our eye view of the entire experience so uh and it's likely to be quite long as well so if you've got the stomach for it please uh, give it a give it a watch because th i think the eastern caribbean if you're talking itineraries the eastern caribbean is up by far our favorite part of the caribbean because it's that kind of like uh, sort of a crescent moon shaped um, uh, sort of array of islands, almost like a, a giant atoll of islands yeah. um, stretching all the way down there. And you've got little Barbados stuck out there, but most of these little islands down here are just utterly jaw dropping. And, and the thing is, because they're so close together, uh, there's no sea days. So you just hop, hop, hop all the way down. And this is the, is it the second or third time we've done the Eastern Caribbean? Second time. Second time. The first time was amazing. It's one of our favorite ever trips. This is turning out to be just the same, simply because the locations are just so great. So as far as itinerary goes. Very port intensive, isn't it? Very port intensive, but there's, there's not many places like it in the world where you can get consistently go to beautiful, beautiful places. So that's the itinerary. Do watch the video because we go into that in some detail and there's some gorgeous scenes in that you've got to see. So let's talk food. We're on a French ship, so yeah, it's we one have of our to favorite, talk food, and it's one of topics. our favorite topics. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> now, the actual flavor of the ship is is incredibly. Fr I mean, if you if you're into France, if you're into French things, 
<laughs> it's, it's definitely the <laughs> definitely the place to be and of course when it comes to dining you've got a kind of a French theme and a sort of French DNA running all the way through. There's two dining options apart from room service which is available 24 hours a day. So there's the two main dining rooms one is situated above the other so one on deck three and one on deck four. The first one is the one which is by the pool which is called the grill which is the more informal sort of venue isn't it and that is adjacent to the lounge so you know you can get drinks and that from the main bar in the lounge and just go and sit out there it's open at lunch and dinner time only they do have like breakfast like snacks breakfast and then a little the afternoon bar. tea thing in the lounge mm. for early risers or late risers mm. but yeah. it's generally only open for lunch and dinner we're not going to do a full dining guide uh, because the ship, quite frankly, is too small and the dining options are limited because of the size of the ship. But so we're, we're, we're just going through what we do now. So consider this to be our dining guide yeah. of Le Dumont de Ville. So we've covered the, the grill area, which is now fresco dining. You order something, remember your table number, you go and see what's on the menu. You say, I'm table number four, can I have this please? And then you go and get yourself a starter and then they bring your mains and then you go up and get a dessert and there's uh, ice creams available as well. And that gelato is absolutely gorgeous. So it's, a, it's sort of a self-service type yeah. thing, but the um, main courses are written on a sort of menu on the yeah. serving station and you order them and or you ask them and then they, they bring them but over they're all to prepared you. fresh by the chefs outside. Yeah. You can see the chefs working in the little sort of, there's like an outdoor galley kitchen there. And there's always available um, at lunch and dinner like burgers and yeah there's a standard menu like things. the pollen standard and then menu. there's three sort of special dishes and at lunchtime as well they have this lovely little they have a food station set up which is like a portable food station yeah. where they do a special of the day yeah. and they do some amazing things on they there do. we've had they mussels do. and then yesterday it was like a pancakey thing yeah. but then you know so you've got that's that's basically for outdoor dining More only informal yeah more informal you sit around the pool uh, it's lovely it's great they still serve you the wines and all the drinks and things like that and that's lovely if you've got a lovely day or you come back and it's a bit you know a bit sandy and you're a bit you, know, you don't really want to go in a restaurant it's great just to plonk yourself down just grab something it's fantastic in the evening you have to predominantly you have to book to ensure that you get a table but again that's an equally good experience uh, it's the same experience you go up and get your own starters you order your mains and then you go up and get your own desserts. But that's the really nice thing to do when it's the sun's going down yeah. and we're sailing away from somewhere. You've got that lovely wake view as you're eating, it's beautiful. Yeah. So moving into the lounge actually very quickly, they do do an afternoon tea every single day from between four, four and four thirty. Yeah. And they're often themed afternoon teas. So we had like a chocolate one. Today we've got a British afternoon tea, so that'd be interesting. I hope there's some scones there. We've I'll had be very milf, disappointed if not. Foy. Milfoui. Milfoui. <laughs> I thought you were learning French. Milf Flores. That isn't that isn't that flowers. And we've had French. We've had Caribbean. We've, so they do themed afternoon teas, which is really quite oh, nice. Oh, we had Again, cupcakes as well one day. A, yeah, nice. it's another help yourself jobbies. We love the afternoon teas with the little cake risers, don't we, and, and everything on it. It's not one of those, but it's actually quite good. But it's not a traditional afternoon tea, no. so you're not going to get. Well, it's a French afternoon tea, so you're going to get ham and cheese croissant bites, you're going to get baguette bites. There's you're usually not... two sort of savoury options and then three or four sweet little options, mm, aren't mm. there? But people just come oh, and I go tell and you help what, themselves. It's absolutely great. You go in there and you're going to get yourself a coffee. They've got lovely coffee going on there. They've got this beautiful tea. I must just mention the tea. I've never seen a tea bag that's actually made of bag. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's so posh. So it's just actually, it's actually more fun getting the tea than it is drinking it. And there's about 12 different varieties yeah. of tea, so yeah. it's great. It's really good. Yeah. In the main lounge as well, you've got the canapes in the evenings. Yeah. And so they often bring round fresh canapes every yeah. single day on a little plate. You also have what I call the, uh, the trademark nut funnel. <laughs> trademark. <laughs> nut funnel. Um, when do they bring around the nut funnel? Is it if I you miss the... If you miss the canapes or if you ask for, I think you can you start ask for, nut for a nut funnel. I think they might not, they, they might look at you a little bit weirdly if you say, uh, monsieur uh, nut funnel, s'il vous plaît. I think you just have to ask for nuts. Just ask for nuts. <laughs> and, uh, I love the nut funnel. It's great. Um, and they're really nice nuts as well. Let's not go on about the nut funnel no. anymore, shall let's we? Let's talk about the main let's restaurant. Let's talk about the main restaurant. 
The main restaurant in itself is a beautiful place and there's a small outdoor area as well, which is lovely. It's first come, I first serve. I think the there. main restaurant can see everybody on the ship. So when we had the gala night, every, mm. everybody tended to go up there. Yep. And the gala night is sort of everybody is served at the same time, a set menu. So, yep. and everybody was in there. It's yep. very beautiful. There's charger plates. Um, the tables are all laid out nice. Like Richard says, there's probably half a dozen, a dozen tables outside Which on a, a lovely little place. terrace. Again, really nice if you can get a table outside. It is, like I say, first come, first serve. Some of them are reserved as well for sweet guests. So it's open for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Dinner starts at 7.30 in both the restaurants. So if you're an early eater, then um, you have to wait till 7.30 unless you want to order room service, I suppose. Um, what I would say about that as well is it's full a la carte. Well, no, in the evening it's full a la carte. Oh. Um, they have a buffet uh, area for breakfast, but again, the breakfast is a la carte as well. You can order from the breakfast menus, which are omelettes and, you know, Eggs Benedict and waffles pancakes. and pancakes. I mean, honestly, watch, watch our vlog because we go into some detail about the, the, the food. There's, a, there's an area where you can serve yourself, but most of it is full a la carte. So that's really nice, especially in the evening. And the food is very French driven, actually, but it is beautiful. It really is beautiful food. Yeah, lunch restaurant. is again a mix of buffet. So your starter and desserts mm -hmm. tend to be in the buffet, but you order your main dish, don't I you? I think they're Alain Ducasse inspired menus. I, I can't remember, but Alain Ducasse is a, well, one of the world's greatest chefs. He's, and he, he's got Michelin stars all over the place. We also have to mention the wines, which have all, all been beautiful as well. So it's all French. All French, which <laughs> we love. Every so. single wine has been French wine. I mean, I love a rosé wine, and yeah. I particularly like it from Provence, and they've all been from Provence. They've all been beautiful. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, very nice. So, yes, for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, the main restaurant really is the place to go if you want fine dining. Someone talking very, very loudly in the corridor just outside. <laughs> just have to wait. Just go and shut the door? Well, I don't yeah. know if I can shut the door, can I? Will they tell me off if I shut the door? Maybe. So gonna... What are they doing out there? They'll probably come in and go, oh, sorry. So to summarise the dining, it is uh, quite a narrow uh, choice. You've got upstairs or downstairs, basically, inside <laughs> or out. Uh, but it is a very, very small ship. I yeah. mean, it's beautiful. It's like a private yacht. So why, you know, let's there's, there's not sweat over that because the food is absolutely delicious, but you do have a limited choice. Yeah, but we haven't struggled to find anything. Oh, gosh, no. Fine. I've got, got to say, mention the bread. Oh yeah, the I bread mean, table at breakfast time. The bread table at breakfast time, the French baguettes that they do here are just the ultimate baguettes. I mean, I could eat that all day long. I mean, it's, a, it's an evil thing because I don't, I don't eat a lot of bread normally, but when I'm here, I just can't resist eating bread all the time. It's just amazing, amazing bread. And the cheese, let's mention the cheese as well. It's all French cheese, but the cheese we had the other night in the cheese buffet, they mm. put on. Yeah, they have I mean, special cheese. I've never evening. seen cheese like it. We've got special I mean, it, caviar evening this evening. We have. Mm. But the cheese, I mean, you're a big cheese fan, aren't you? Yeah. And the cheeses were just something else. Yeah, I tend so. to have the cheese plate every night for dinner rather than a dessert, don't I? So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. massive thumbs up for the food. Uh, dies out of dies, <laughs> I think they say in France, aren't they? <laughs> Let's move on to entertainment, shall we? Yes. So, entertainment. They're, obviously, it's a small ship, so again, the entertainment is quite limited, but they do put lots of entertainment on, don't they? Do they do put lots of entertainment on, and I have to say again, the entertainment is very French. Yeah. There's two lounge entertainers who play live music. They do lunch, they do. afternoon tea, pre-dinner, and then again later in the later evening. In the evening. Um, there's a guy who plays a guitar, and then there's a female vocalist, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tatiana, her name is, and they're in so two background sort of solo performers. Music. Yeah, yeah. And they do just sort of background noodling and stuff like that. But it's great. I mean, you'll be in there during the day, and uh, there'll be nobody in there, and they'll still be singing. Yeah. And it, when, when you're sort of sitting there having your drink and chatting. You think it's actually just a background music yeah. track, but actually when you look in the corner, someone's actually singing live music. So it's lovely, it's subtle. It's, it's not in your face, it's not too loud. It just feels really luxurious. The You'll lounge is also where they do like quizzes during the day. So there is trivia and quizzes. Obviously it's mostly yeah. in French. Mostly in French. Every single thing here is dual language. So yes. they, they say every announcement in French, then English. Every port talk is in French and English. Every single thing they do, they have French language 
English language. So don't worry about coming on board thinking, I don't understand French. So unless you can't understand English as well, you've got a bit of a problem because it's only French and English. I mean, the only time that we've sort of noticed it is like some... So after dinner, the entertainment there, we've had three theatre shows so far, um, which have been really, really good. So there's three like modern ballet dance girls on here who yeah. are fabulous it's like and a ballet do... uh, production company isn't it yeah so it's and quite ballet the focused. dance is beautiful if you love dancing and Very they dance are accompanied focused. by a, another female singer yeah. and they they do shit shows in the theatre if you like casinos um, and you like to spend time in casinos this is probably not the shit for you because there isn't a casino no they do like you say they do a casino like a night games night yeah it's like thing. a casino night I, we didn't go to the casino nights so we don't know quite what it entails but let's talk about the karaoke yeah. night because well we, that's what I was going to say um, yeah but the karaoke night it was brilliant, wasn't it? It was such fun just to sit. And they, they had an English list of songs and they had a French list of songs. Now, obviously, the guests are predominantly French, so we, we were too shy to do karaoke. So everyone that got up was French and they all singing French songs. And once you've had a couple of cocktails and the French guests have had a couple of cocktails who were singing. And it's <laughs> we were trying to sing along to songs we've never heard in a language that we don't speak. But we were it was so it funny. Go. It was really, fun. really good fun, <laughs> and just an absolute hoot, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, we didn't have a clue what was going on. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wanted to get up and sing one of the French songs because that would have been hilarious. Because <laughs> I, I couldn't even follow the the dot as it was going along. The t I mean, it was ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, they so have yeah. things like that. But um, I would say the main entertainment in the theatre is certainly on this ship, and I'm not saying. It, it, I'm not sure we've been on the other ships. Very dance focused because it is a ballet mm. company. But the dances, the fabulous to watch. It's very contemporary. Very, very contemporary, very avant-garde, very, um, again, it's got a kind of weird, edgy French feel mm. to it. And um, actually, I, I really like that. It's a refreshing change from the sort of club, club singer lounge, style, yeah. club lounge type thing you get on the vast majority of cruise ships yeah. you go on where they just sing you know, hits from the shows or, yeah. you know, 60s. Uh, this is not it. This is something very different. I have to excuse us if you can hear things in the background. We're in a bar and they've just opened it and uh, there's lots of clanking of things. <laughs> so uh, forgive us if... We'll uh, try and mute that down. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that they do every day is a little mini port talk at 7.15, just before the restaurant opens. So every night the cruise director, Charlene, comes into the lounge and gives a dual language sort of quick port talk about what's happening the next day, which is really useful. Absolutely. And they always produce a little pamphlet in both French and English about where you're going to be for the day, which gives you some restaurants to visit and a little bit of a guide of where you yep. are and things like that and we've done a lot on our own so they've uh, been really useful while we're on the subject of entertainment and pre-dinner and all that kind of thing we just have a quick talk about the bars yes so we've got uh, the bar we're sitting in now which is the observation bar at yeah. the front of the ship it's got a beautiful observation deck at the front but the, actually it's really really quiet this bar it's open sort of twice a day for sort of yeah. two hours at a time and there doesn't seem to ever be anyone in here it's always here. open from 9 to 11 mm. but there's no live entertainment but if I mean, you wanted to come and have a quiet drink it's perfect it's, it's absolutely gorgeous this bar is, is beautiful yeah and the front area we we tend we to go out go there out every there night lot. and watch yeah. the sunset out there um, and we because, sit out there during the day as well because there's mm, some nice sofas out there. It's and sheltered, it's, it's, it's nice under and a cover. Shaded, yeah. And it, it's just a beautiful, you've got a beautiful bow view. Teas here during the day. They've got a lovely coffee machine up here, but you can't it's use behind it the bar. Yeah. So if there's no one behind the bar, you can't get a coffee. Although they do have all those lovely uh, tea bags yeah. out for you to use. So and then there's the main lounge, which the main is lounge. the one downstairs, which is manned from six in the morning yeah. until midnight. Really. And by contrast, that is heavily used. Yes. That is basically full up in the evening pre-dinner, especially for the port talk, but also with there's entertainment, the afternoon tea, and, and just general for drinks in the evening. It, it's, you barely find a spare seat. It's a really, um, really nice atmosphere in there. Yeah. And that's where all the main drinking goes on, to be fair. Yeah. But of course, the, the pièce de résistance on the Explorer-class ships is the Blue Eye Lounge, which is in, on deck zero no deck one well you, you the elevator goes oh, down to deck true. one and then that's you go true. down the stairs down. to You're the right. bowels You're of the right. ship 
Yes. It's right at the front of the ship. You have to take one elevator only. There's only one elevator that goes down to the forward elevator. Deck one, and then you come out of the deck and one. And when it's not open, you can't press deck one. You, you can't, can't press deck one. There. It's usually open once a day for two hours, yeah. and the time will vary. So, we yeah. thought the Blue Eye Lounge was a little bit of a gimmick to start with because no one's got a Blue Eye Lounge. No. Apart from Ponnell, and you go down there, you think, mm, you know, yeah, it's great. You know, it's all kind of like dim lights and this, that, and the other. But when you go down there, you have to say to yourself, I'm going to come down tomorrow, see if, the, see if there's anything different. It's actually been quite addictive. We found ourselves going down there every single day. They only serve wines and champagne down there. So I think you can get like cans of soft drinks as well if you right. wanted to. There's a very limited bar because they can't leave it stopped because of the motion. Because it's so low in there. the ship. If, if they've got any rough weather, that's where it slams. Yeah. So they can't leave anything particularly breakable down there. But we go down there for a couple of glasses of champagne and we just sit in front of one of those windows and it's mesmerising. It's every single day. See it's different. different. It's something different. Watch our vlog for a little bit more detail about this because we do go down there every day and we do film what we see through the windows. So that's quite an interesting thing. But the Blue Eyed Lounge. We've had days when we've been down there and seen nothing. Yeah. So there are days like that. And um, we've been down days when we're down there, we're like, don't want to leave. Yeah. It's fantastic. The other thing that we love about the, this ship, which is really quite unusual, is that they have underwater light all, all along, along the, side. the side of the ship. So when you stand on your balcony and look down at night, you can see into the water and actually you can see the fish swimming in the water Amazing. from the bal yeah, from your balcony. Yeah, really incredible. Okay, so okay. let's talk about the public areas that we yes, haven't Yes, let's talk about, about the public areas. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with something that I don't like. What's that? Okay, and that's the gym. Mm. There is no weights, there's no resistance training equipment, there's, there's nothing like that. There's not even a floor area where you can do no. body weight. It's very small. I mean, and it's I know literally just a row of, yeah. of aerobic stuff in front of a window and with I, very little space behind it, isn't it? And I know the ship is very small. Even just a rack of dumbbells or one of those uh, sort of pulley weight system things, something for resistance training, just to provide something different, because we do a lot of cardio. When we get off the ship, you do mm. a lot of walking. walking. We've, we've been walking yeah. about five to 10K every single yeah. day. Oh, I don't know how far up we are, but I'm puffing like a, not like a puffin. Do puffins puff? You don't need the cardio. You need a little bit more of the other, so that it just gets the, you know, the circulation going. So it's a big thumbs down for me is the gym well it's, it's located within the spa which is on deck seven and in the spa there is also a nail salon and a hair salon which are both really large and if they could have just given over a little bit of that, that room, room just combined to, the nail and the hair yeah well let's talk about the spa yes because massage we were gifted a massage Pond. from Ponant. it was a one hour couple's massage absolutely the best massage i think we've ever had it was beautiful we and had it at sunset that. didn't we? we had it at sunset the treatment room is floor to ceiling yeah. windows looking out over the sea the girls that did the massage yeah, were just brilliant. amazing we had a time in the sauna on our own which is uh, looks out over the sea as well and by golly that sauna was hot it's a huge, huge sauna. sauna only allowed two people in so you have to book it and it's yeah. very private it's lovely it really is so there's if you're a little a couple, like shower area outside of it so, so you do you the can, hot and cold thing yeah. yeah a massive sauna for just two of you mm. yeah it's <laughs> so. strange isn't it? that gives a thumbs up for us i just wish that ponant would have taken a little bit of that spa area away and given a little bit more over yeah. to the gym but that's just my opinion people would scoff at me for using a gym on holiday but a lot of people like doing it, I'm telling you now. I mean, I, I get up every every morning early to go to the gym for an hour. Well, it has There's been always busy. people in there. Yeah. Always. Exactly. Not just this one, but any ship I go yeah. on. So it, 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 there's a reason. But outside but, of the spa area is a lovely sun terrace, the Deck well, 7 is, sun the terrace, top. where they do put sun lounges lovely. out. Now, this is where my criticism lies a little bit, is that there's not many spaces with sun lounges there is the deck seven which probably has a, a dozen sun lounges mm -hmm. on it and then there's the two wings beside the pool at the back of deck three which again is literally a dozen there's six on either side six sunbeds on either side so we're talking about 24 sun lounges for 180 passengers so mm -hmm. that for me that's a little bit of a criticism i know that this is an expedition ship and you're often doing stuff but it's still nice to well, have well that's somewhere. the thing we have to bear in mind you know we're, we're going to balance all our little petty criticisms here with the fact that the ship is this very, very small ship. And obviously they have only a limited amount of space to work to. 
It is an expedition ship. Remember, it's not a cruise ship. Look and at we're the category. And we've been off the ship so much. Oh, you know, when they take you to a beach, why would you want to be sitting on a sun lounger on a sun deck when you can be sitting it, on a gorgeous it, beach? It, with, exactly, yeah, exactly. So. There's no hot tubs on board, no public hot tubs, because the two owners, there's two owner suites at the back, they've got a hot tub each on there. Well, that's so lovely. if you want a hot tub, you have to book one you of the two owner suites. You have to splash out on a, like, literally <laughs> splash on, a, uh, on an owner suite. And um, again, it feels a little bit of a missed opportunity. That they could have perhaps put a hot tub on that deck seven where there's next to the gym. But the pool, we have to just quickly mention the pool, which is very small. It's an infinity pool with a glass back, which looks out over the back. And although it's tiny, it has got a swim, exercise. Like a swim trainer in it, hasn't yeah. it? It's um, amazing. So you look at it and you think, I can't, it's a dip pool. You just plunge in it. It's nothing, nothing special. But there's this, there's this thing on the on on the edge of the pool, a uh, little sort of little chrome sort of thing, and it's got a button on it. Don't, whatever you do, <laughs> do not stand in front of it and press the button, because you will be punched so hard in the guts by this jet of water that comes out instantly. It doesn't even just sort of speed up. It just like literally bang. I tried that, and it and it winded me. Um, and basically, what it is is you you turn it on. It provides this flow of water down the centre of the pool and you just swim against it. And it, it is incredible. I don't yeah. know why. Other small ships with small pools don't put that in. It is incredible. But you do have it's to probably find the pool when it's empty and use it when it's empty because oh, yeah. other guests may not want to do that. <laughs> Imagine other guests trying fair, to pass from one side to the pool to the other and find themselves in a current in the middle. It is a fabulous, fabulous little thing yeah. to put in the swimming pool yeah so well done point of that there's a massive thumbs up and obviously that one. below that is the marina deck where we get on and off yes. the ship as well the and when they take the zodiacs out there's a big um sort of extension that comes out isn't it amazing so, um it's amazing it and when you out. come back up those steps there's these lovely like water sprays so yeah. you can clean your feet yeah. as you're coming up really, and really clever. yeah it's very cleverly uh, designed and i think that's it when it comes to the external uh, the yeah. public areas of the ship is it yes and there's a lovely set of stairs that go from the sun terrace oh, on the deck seven which goes right Right the way down to deck three. All the way all down. The way you can down. look all the way so down. Our room is on deck six, and if we're at the pool, so we get out of the pool, put a robe on, we can literally come back to our room, just go all the way up the yeah, back steps outside, yeah. and then through our corridor on deck six. We don't have to go through any of the public areas with no. our wet stuff on, so it's really actually good from that point of view. Yeah. Just a really. quick mention about the excursions on offer and what you do when you're on the ship. So about a third of the days so far have been like beach days or about probably about a third of the or overall I like beach days um, where there are no excursions because the beach is your destination. Well exactly they take the zodiacs on shore they knock umbrellas into the into the sand. They bring a small bar over. And, and you just you just chill and yeah. on these little deserted beaches your beautiful white powdery sand yeah it's the Caribbean dream basically. Sometimes a they're beach. on public beaches so there are you know you can walk along the beach a little way and go to a public bar if you wanted to get something to eat or drink but you know and the zodiacs. Where do we go? We went to the soggy dollar didn't we? Yeah. We went to the soggy dollar and I had a painkiller which is a, a cocktail famous cocktail the soggy dollar is supposed to be the number one beach bar in the Caribbean so we went there and we're showing you a few clips now over the over the narrative but watch the vlog that was it a really, all... really fun day and it was a Zodiac day so a wet landing so the Zodiacs were coming backwards and forwards they had about half a dozen Zodiacs out didn't they come backwards and forwards all day long by lunchtime everybody had come back onto the ship to have lunch and there was literally Richard and I and one other couple sitting on the in the sort of on an area weren't they with the yeah. guy from the bar still yeah, serving yeah. a champagne amazing and it was just nobody else everybody had incredible. come back on for lunch incredible we, we went to the bar next door for lunch but we yeah we went to the was, soggy dollar. so we had for, for about an hour and a half two hours we had like that whole area ourselves. pretty much to ourselves yeah. with this one other american couple so yeah. it was yeah. fun anyway we're Fantastic. talking about excursions we did one yesterday just to see what the excursions were like didn't we um there was quite a lot of us went on that it was a catamaran and snorkeling one in mm -hmm. Way. We literally got off the tender straight onto the catamaran, sailed around the island, did some snorkeling, mm. came back, drunk some rum. Um, Very strong rum. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it was strong. No, it's great. So, excursions, yes, if you want to pay for excursions, you get your booklet when you book your Ponant trip and you can book your excursions. It's, there's a sort of wealth of things, but what we found being here is you don't really have to spend any money because no. the, the things they lay on for free and the, and the sort of tiny locations you go to is actually more interesting 
in our opinion, than actually going on an excursions and spending half, three quarters of an hour in a coach each yeah. way. You don't need to do that. Just get off the ship and wander through the streets. I mean, it's just, that's your entertainment, you know? Um, so in summary, what have we found Ponon to be? Because we've been on uh, most other ultra luxury ships and luxury ships, and Ponon was one of those cruise lines that intrigued us. And they had some beautiful ships. We knew that because we'd been on a couple before. But we wanted to experience it and see what it was actually like to do a full voyage on Pon, somewhere very special. And I think here in the Eastern Caribbean is that special place. And it's definitely somewhere we would recommend to go. But would you do it on Pon? Pon is a very French flavored ship. And I personally love that. Absolutely love that. We love France. We love the French way. We love French food. We love the French people. We love all things French, basically, don't we? We do. And, and actually to us, it's just a real joy to be on a ship that's not American focused mm. or Italian focused mm. or, you know, focused on these other areas that have popularized mm. by so many cruise ships. It's lovely to be on a ship with a different flavor. Mm. It's not so different as for you to think, well, you know, this is a little bit, you know, it's getting to me. It's just got that it's like adding a little bit of truffle to a meal or a little bit of garlic to a meal. It's just something about it that just gives it that. I would describe the whole experience as very quietly elegant, mm. not in a very, not in a formal way. It's quite, it's quite relaxed. Very relaxed. relaxed. Yeah, yeah. There are quietly a couple of formal elegant. nights though, so you yeah. can wear your tux or oh, you can wear your suit. People dress up in the evening. Oh, they do. I mean, I, you know, very elegant. But yeah. it's, it's not that, not that expectation to it. It feels very relaxed, but elegant. Elegant. Casually, quietly, elegant. It is, and there everything, everything about it, I would say, is is elegant. Yeah. I think the the decor of the ship is elegant. The 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 guests are elegant. Yeah. The staff are elegant. Yeah. The food is elegant. The cocktails are elegant. Everything about it, it's just got that kind of touch about it that's just assured. Yeah. Also, too, let's just have a quick mention about the crew. Honestly, we always say the crew are fabulous. I mean, it sounds a bit sycophantic because we just keep going on about how fabulous crews are. When you do a luxury cruise, when you do a small ship cruise, you often find, for the majority of time, the crew are fabulous. Yeah. So there's very little to complain well, about. When, when there's less guests to get to know, they get to know you that they much do. quicker. So within a day or two, the bar crew particularly knew our names, they knew what we liked to drink, and we had to you know, shout out the bar crew. They yeah. are just yeah. amazing. They're, They're amazing. Just... And, and so, yeah, I mean, I would say that the, the crew really make um, certainly a pawn on ship what it is. And I have to say something about the captain as well. He is he's literally there everywhere he is he's there to greet you if you come off a, off a tender he's there to wave you off from a tender yeah he's there in the bar in the evenings to talk to guests he's there to do this he's there to do that he's there in the mornings checking he's hosting the mor tables he's, in the main honestly restaurant. honestly he's yeah. so so busy and he really gets in with people he's a fabulous captain and you know that's what and you like to see. And he's also great with the crew as well. He so he'll great. host crew tables outside, and we've seen him ashore with crew members mm. taking mm. the crew members ashore. So yeah. he's not just looking after the passengers; he's looking after the crew yeah. as well. Yeah, very, very good. He yeah. really mucks in, and yeah. you know. And with that, I think it's time to wrap things up now. Thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far, he, <laughs> we've made it. Thank you so much because it's been quite a. Uh, quite a thorough review. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it inspires you to watch these next. And with that, we say au revoir. Au revoir and merci beaucoup for watching. I don't know what for watching is in French. A bientôt. What's that?